Hey, Crawl Spacers, welcome to our February Spider History, the month of love, if you will. And someone I tolerate is uh, JR. What's going on, JR? How are that's, you, buddy? Right, that's right, Brad, because, you know, I have enough love in my heart for both of us. So, okay. <laughs> whatever. You but, but before we go, it took me a month to read this. But uh, Del Boy 3, 3K1 Retro Zone said he got the Kindle version of Web Slinger with the essay by yours truly. Do yeah. you get a, a no prize? Yes, you do. All <laughs> right. Sorry, it's a month late in coming, but uh, I, I saw it. So, Yes, he put that on our Discord. Check out our Discord channel. Uh, there's a link on the front page of the Crawl Space, and he put a picture of JR's book, which when did that come out? The early 2000s? 2007, maybe. Or 2007. Something like. so, oh, yes. I, I, I remember that because I was uh, doing research. I was uh, working on it when my daughter was like one of the King's kids and the, ki the King and I. Uh, that was a long time ago. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, we last month, uh, we reviewed Art Attacks and Web. Now we're doing a bona fide classic, JR. Uh, this one... Um, I remember quite well. Uh, it's the the reve Hobgoblin Revealed. This is allegedly, which it's not really, uh, where they reveal spider or Hobgoblin's identity. And they started it off in a one-shot, which is kind of like a Marvel team-up with Spider-Man versus Wolverine. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kind of get into, uh, how this kind of happened. So we're, what this is, is we're going to take a little journey through the, uh, reveal of the original Hobgoblin. So, uh, or the, the Hobgoblin, as he was originally revealed, who turned out that it's not the real Hobgoblin, but we yeah. thought he was dead, but then he came back and he became a Hobgoblin. I don't want to, but anyway, well, so just, but, just six months ago, he was a Hobgoblin. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> so anyway, so we're, we're going to go through this, 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 this twisted tale here. Uh, and uh, we're going to start off with what some people consider to be a classic, the Spider-Man yeah. versus Wolverine one shot written by uh, Jim Owsley slash Christopher Priest, who never discusses Spider-Man again uh, because he was the editor and she, he was at Spider-Man, yeah. the editor of the spider titles at this time. He also uh, fired Ron friends and Tom DeFalco, which is a crying shame. Yes, he did. Well, he and was told it, to, he was told to by Jim shooter, yep. according he, to his article. Yeah. He has an article up on his website where it's called why I never discussed Spider-Man. Yep. And was, it talks about how he was, he says he was the wrong person at, uh, for the job. He was hired really young to be the spider editor and he regrets, uh, a lot of decisions, a lot of burnt bridges, but uh, yeah, a lot of politics with this story. And the, and well, the yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. He says that after he fired Tom, Jim shooter said, why did you do that? Uh, and Owsley said, because you told me to. And shooter said, yeah, but I didn't think you'd actually do it. Right. Yeah. That, I tell you that is American man corporate management. One Oh one. I mean, Awful. I mean, shooter, uh, you know, and, and, and actually it's, it's a great article. You, you should, it mean, is. If, you're, if you're a spider historian, you should definitely read it. Um, cause it's a little insight into what was going on with Spider-Man in Marvel. But, uh, you know, Jim shooter is a, a legendary uh, person in, in Marvel comics history mm -hmm. and, and Owsley gives him credit for essentially, you know, juicing up the brand and, you know, uh, uh, giving it much more exposure and popularity, but you know, he also was his own worst enemy. Uh, and, uh, just some of the stories Owsley tells about shooters, poor management, just, it just, he's not singular in his poor management. So yeah. uh, in, in American business. So, but anyway, mm -hmm. Owsley himself wrote this one shot, um, considered a classic by many, not by me. I don't <laughs> like this story. I think it, uh, I, for, for one, it's, it's more Wolverine centric than Spider-Man centric. Here's and that article two, we were talking about. It's on yeah. digital. It's on lame lamercpark.com um it talks about his uh i like this story he talks about he assigned a cover to john byrne to do a doc ock versus spidey cover and john byrne didn't like the dental outfit that doc was wearing at the time you know the little white dentist outfit so he just drew the arms attacking Spider-Man. It's a great looking cover. It's a great cover. But it's it doesn't show that goofy looking costume on it. Yeah, Doc Ock, deadly, deadly yeah. dentist. But, so uh, uh, good, good, good article here. If you want to check it out, um, uh, about just type in why I, why I never talk about Spider-Man and, and, uh, Christopher Priest. So, 
So anyway, after derailing what was hopefully going to be an, uh, another Titanic tale for all the viewers out there. Uh, anyway, so I'll get back to it. Um, well, we start off with, uh, like I said, this seems more like a Wolverine. And oh, by the way, Spider-Man's in it too. Uh, you know, the first few pages are Spider or Wolverine with this operative friend of his quote that he mm-hmm. called Charlie. Okay. Wow. Well, you know, Charlie is obviously a, a, a master spy who's left a whole lot of bad, bad mojo behind in his or her wake. Uh, it's really no surprise what sex Charlie is, considering that at least the artist drew that person. Honestly, you can tell by the slim build what it is. Although when you read it, the, the writer expects you to be surprised uh, later. Uh, but uh, so... You know, we go through that. We we go through Wolverine kind of setting up the story, setting up what Charlie is, setting up Charlie's relationship with him uh, and how she kind of disappears into the ether. uh, And he's got to go find her again. Uh, And remember, this is set. This story is set before the fall of the Berlin Wall. So the um, you know, I mean, it's it's a very much a Cold War story. Um, so, you know, anyway, so Spider-Man is, is, you know, is, is swinging through the, um, you know, swinging through the city and he catches sight of this, you know, beautiful woman in this scuzzy neighborhood. It's like, what is she doing there? Well, you know, pretty well, uh, that's a dead giveaway that she is a significant (laughs) character. All right. Well, yeah. Spider-Man sees this, you know, anyway, she got bumped into by this crying kid and Spider-Man, you know, well, what are you crying about kid? And the kid mentions a Sophie and Bert who are a couple of shop owners uh, in hell's kitchen. Uh, and so Spider-Man uh, runs to uh, uh, runs there and uh, finds out that they have been executed, which is, uh, you know, who, who would execute a couple of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, uh salt of the earth shop owners in hell's kitchen. Mm-hmm. So, but we'll find out soon enough anyway. So we go back to the esteemed offices of the daily bugle. Uh, and, uh, Jameson wants to send spider Peter to, uh, South America. Uh, but then that all changes when Ned leads drops by and Ned wants to talk to, um, Ned wants to talk to Jonah privately. Ooh, this is good. Gonna- Okay. Anyway, so, so Peter rushes to uh, where he rushes to Aunt May's house where Mary Jane is there and having dinner with all the but all the old geezers uh, <laughs> in Aunt May's boarding house because as you remember during this time, boys and girls, uh, Aunt May had uh, rehabbed uh, the old Forest Parker Forest Hills home into yep. a halfway house uh, for a yep. bunch of uh, hairless, toothless geezers, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, that's where she uh, met, uh, you know, Nathan LeBitz, Nathan. Or whatever, who turned out yep. to be a real turd. And when he died, I didn't miss him whatsoever. No, nope. um, nobody did. Yeah. Oh, so, wait a minute. Didn't the vulture, the vulture kind of missed him. The vault, the vault. Well, the vulture is the one that caused that, that killed him essentially. Didn't he I think have he, a little regret. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. But you know, the vulture, but, but then again, that's true, I suppose, because he really was a nice guy because his grandma, his granddaughter never knew that he was a murderer or a criminal or anything like that. So, <laughs> Uh, so okay anyway peter's spider sense is going off uh, he and mary jane are uh, at Times square and his spider sense is going off and he's able to figure out that what he hears is a sniper uh and after the sniper you know takes out a couple of people uh and peter gets nowhere with him nowhere with it can't find the person who did it um, and he's really agonizing about it and he goes to Mary Jane, you know, and he's just pacing the floor and he's, he's, you know, um, you know, really, you know, kind of feeling guilty and bad about it. And then he draws Mary Jane close, mm-hmm. but he realizes he's crossed the line. Really? Oh yeah. They're I not just, married yet. Are they? I, okay. Well, they're not in a committed relationship. <laughs> At this point in time, this is not so dating. close to when they got married, though. Is this eighty? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This is uh, this is close. Uh, yeah. But Owsley was slash priest was w- definitely against Peter and Mary Jane marrying. Yeah, and part of what he was because he saw where it was going. But part of, yeah. I, I think I read part of where he was going with this little exchange here is that they were wrong for each other mm, and that whatever. it shouldn't go anywhere. Yeah, he's. 
that's his opinion. Well, we find out that, uh, you know, we find out what Ned wants to talk to Jonah about is that Ned has a, a lead on a lot of these assassinations that are going on about with a lot of, uh, at that time, Soviet or KGB operatives who are all of a sudden getting blown away. And Sophie and Bert just happen to be KGB operatives. All right. So Ned wants to go to Germany uh, to, um, you know, you he's got a lead in Germany and he yeah. think, but he, anyway, but he's sure it's this character called Charlemagne, which is the Charlie that uh, Wolverine was referencing earlier. Okay. So, so Ned wants to go on the trail of Charlemagne. Uh, by the way, that sounds <clears throat> like Charlemagne, the, the famous, his, famous, uh, uh, warrior in British history, I believe, or French, mm. French. I think he's French, but anyway, so Jonah calls Peter because, you know, Ned needs a good photographer and who else, who else do we know is a great photographer in the Marvel universe? Mm. Jo- uh, is there another so- photographer in the Marvel universe besides Peter Parker? Well, Lance Bannon for a while, oh, but uh, uh, he's not alive anymore. You mean facade? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. And Cole Cooper. <laughs> we, we talked about Ooh. Cole Cooper one time last year. Phil, uh, uh, the guy from Marvels. Uh, Phil. Phil Sheldon. Phil yeah, Sheldon. Phil, yeah, Sheldon. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's another. So, yep. so anyway, we, we, we go to Germany now and uh, we find out, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Wolverine is being followed. Uh, and um, actually, it turns out that. Uh, uh, he find, well, well, what he does is he finds out that uh, some, uh, uh, I believe they're KGB. But anyway, eventually it becomes every, every secret, every secret operation is after Charlie because she's so. We never really find out why she's so good or how she's so good or what she did or what operation she took a part of. We just have to take Wolverine's word for it that yeah. she's really deadly and everybody's coming after her because, you know, they they, 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 they want to shut her down. So well, he is the best at what he does. Well, <laughs> according to Logan's word. Well, according no, to Logan, Logan yeah. Because, yeah. Logan's the best at what he does. But uh, so anyway, so Peter, Peter and Ned get to Germany. And uh, Wolverine just happens to be walking by. Now, Wolverine and Spider-Man have not met too many times. They know each other. Marvel but team they... up 117. Yeah. And but... and th- have they returned? They were returned from the Secret Wars. Yeah, they did. So we're, as, Spider-Man's as George, whooped his ass. As George yeah. Barrowman will tell us relentlessly, <laughs> yeah. uh, Spider-Man whooped, uh, uh, yeah. threw him around like a rag doll. Yeah, but, there's uh, Lance and Peter and Wolverine walking by, and Wolverine well, Ned, gets a little Ned, sad. Ned, 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 Ned and Peter, Ned and Peter. But anyway, but now we find out Wolverine, of course, is not, he's not the first person to identify Spider-Man by smell. Uh, that that goes, that uh, honor is reserved to Puma. But, um, <laughs> you know, but Wolverine smells him and knows that Peter is Spider-Man yeah. uh, by smell. Which, so, that's not that's not a bad deal. That's kind of a cool thing. No, it's not. It's, 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 he, but what he's, he doesn't bathe. He stinks. Oh, no, you know, dog, he uses the wrong no kind sense. of cologne. No, JR, you, you can have a blind dog and a blind dog can smell you. Uh, and Wolverine has essentially got the nose of a dog. You know, he's got, he's got senses. So I think it's kind of cool. It's uh, essentially like Wolverine went up to Spider-Man's butt, sniffed it and said, that's Peter Parker. You know, <laughs> no, no, the <laughs> other way know each other. He's, all right. He sniffed Peter Parker's butt and said, that's Spider-Man. Well, there's a. There's a quote of the night. All, all right, right. All right. Well, we only have about another 43 minutes, so I better, we better be these. flying, baby. I all better right. whip through these. Well, anyway, so Wolverine shows up, you know, and, and, and tells uh Spider-Man, you know, they, they go out and do a little hunting for, uh, for Charlemagne, but, uh, they don't find it, but they don't find him slash her or whatever. But Peter gets back to the hotel where he's staying at and he finds out that in his absence, Ned Leeds has been murdered. Now, Hold on. Look, uh, I got to show the scene of it. Yep. yep. His throat was cut. Look at that. Yep. There His it throat is. was slit. Yep. And look at the guys, how they're dressed. You know. How the guys are dressed? How Peter's yeah, how dressed? how the assassins Ned? are dressed. Look, just oh, the look assassins. At, yeah, look Where? at the how the assassins are dressed. Because they're not going to be dressed that way in the next story. When we the find next it. story. The, the, the blue yep. suits are gone? Right, right, right. Okay. All right. So. 
Yeah, there's no communication he, with the editor because <laughs> yeah. the editor's writing the damn thing. <laughs> well, no, this, this I'll, I'll explain when we get to 289 okay, got what you. was going on you. here because this story was written first before anything. Well, yeah. Peter decides that, uh, you know, he wants to get away. He wants to leave uh, Germany, but he realizes that with great power comes great responsibility. So he goes around looking for a costume. He needs to, he's trying to find a pair of tights or something or whatever they can use to obscure his identity. So he goes to a costume shop. You know, they don't have the, what he's looking for, but the guy, the proprietor just, has happened to put together uh, a costume for his son uh the uh, par son's party it's rather silly looking uh but you know here it is yeah man yeah. oh, should, should we do the trivia of this suit you, you know the little trivia of that suit well it says die spine on the back of it, but yeah, I don't but know do you know do you know why he what famous issue he wore that in uh it's not, uh, well, it's not, uh, sp it's not spectacular. 75, is it? Or wasn't it, that wasn't an ASM 301. Didn't he wear that die spine when he got rid of the black suit? Isn't that I famous McFarland swinging I at don't the remember. end of 300 uh, die I spine? I swear. I don't it. remember. I could be wrong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's Zach says it. There you go. 300. Yep. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. So anyway, so, you know, now in the die spine uh, outfit. What, what does that mean, by the way? Is that the probably spider? The spider. The spider, I would, yeah. I would guess the spider, but it, yeah. to, me, you know, to me, it reads like die spine uh, yeah. because I'm uncultured. So Spider-Man, you know, planted a uh, planted a tracer on Wolverine. And now he's he's going to he's going over the wall to East Berlin, uh -oh. dr, dr, which, you know, as you know, boys and girls, that I mean, was a, East Berlin was a thing. East Germany was a thing. West Germany was a thing. Oh, here uh, he's going to jump the wall. Here I got I got to, a picture of it right so here. Anyway, so he jumps the wall. Um, what did Mr. Reagan say about the wall? Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There you go. Or Spider Man's going to jump over it again. <laughs> so anyway so you know spider-man had planted a tracer on wolverine earlier of course wolverine you know i mean if after all if he can smell you he knows when he's had but, but had a tracer put on him so you know spider-man finds a tracer and there's a there it is with the note says you're in way over your head bub go home okay yeah. now the whole this whole issue wolverine is trying to convince spider-man that he's in over his head and spider-man starts believing this bullshit i mean this is a guy who in a, went to a spaceship uh with ben Grimm, and they fought thanos okay <laughs> and after, even after thanos had beaten all the avengers and imprisoned them spider-man is able to rescue the avengers and the, and also knock the egg over to free adam warlock and adam warlock turns thanos to stone and that's that happened in the 1970s so why every anybody thinks spider-man would be afraid of commies and kgb when he's mm -hmm. been in outer space fight facing down aliens i i, I don't know anyway this is one yeah. reason i hate the story anyway Wolver wolverine finds charlie who of course is a woman and of course it's the same woman that peter parker saw Aww. um on the streets of new york starts, and of course you know wolverine has it Wolverine has a thing with uh, all the, all, you know, has a thing with women that those he kills and those he don't kill. But, you know, he always has something going on with him. Yep. So anyway, Wolverine's going to still try to get to, you know, Charlie's been what Charlie's been doing is Charlie's been assassinated. She did something and then they tried to wipe her out, you know, kind of like, you know, first rule of assassinations, kill the assassins. Well, you know, Charlie took it personally. And so she's killing all these KGB agents all over the world. All right. Yeah. But we never really find out what, what, you know, any more about it. Um, but uh, Wolverine still thinks he can get her out of it. But uh, Spider-Man, you know, bursting in on their restaurant scene, you know, uh, apparently ruins it for, um, for, for Wolvie. And to make a long story, you know, to make a long story short, ultimately they wind up in a graveyard and Spider-Man and Wolverine are in a fight. Mono e mono. Yep. And Sp Spider-Man finally has him pretty well clobbered. Here, let me, get the, he let me get the pictures. Because I, I remember as a kid, this was a great fight. The great fight. 
well, Spider-Man should have taken should have taken him out e uh, easier. Are you, I mean, I, are you so far ahead? Something? That, well, I have uh, to be because we only okay. have thirty-seven minutes left, okay. and I got three more issues. Well, you got to go. talk about what Wolverine does to the girl. Well, yeah, bit. we will. Well, actually, it's not what Wolverine does; it's what Spider-Man ultimately does. Yeah, okay. uh, basically, okay, here's the here's the fight. If you, I've yeah. got the fight up. If you want to see yeah. it, here's see, the fight. But, but Charlie has asked, Charlie wants Wolverine to kill her. Because if Wolverine kills her, then she won't get captured by the commies and she won't be tortured and uh, things of that. So Wolverine sticks her, but she doesn't quite die. Um, okay, got it. And um, so th they get in a fight. And frankly, I, I, I don't know. Spider-Man should still take on Wolverine without much effort. Uh, and so, uh, but, but, but he, he find he, he gets, look, he, he's giving he finally gets good. him down and he's bashing him. Uh, and ultimately the only way he can beat him is to kill him. And look Wolverine, at that, that Wolverine shot. Is, yeah. When I was a kid, I'm like, oh my gosh, if Wolverine pulls these claws, oof. Well, you know, Spider-Man is wussified in this story. Yeah. It's one reason I've never liked the story because Spider-Man is just wussified. Um, you know, uh, so, but then, you know, all these evil KGB, CIA, secret, uh, all these, you know, they're all congregating on this graveyard, you know, because they're all after Charlemagne. And uh, Spider-Man is his, his adrenaline is really pumped, uh, and he's not quite. He's kind of losing his bearings and focus. She gets behind him, and somebody's Boom. behind him, and he pops. Who's behind him? And it turns out to be Charlemagne committing suicide by spider, or superhero. Yeah, she he kills her. Yeah, he does. It's, it's, Unbelievable. He well, she you know she knew he was amped up, and. Oh. Uh, Snuck up behind him and uh, he broke it, basically broke her neck, I assume. Yep, snap. So, learned that from Gwen Stacy. Yep. So, <laughs> Spider Man is just there, absolutely devastated. Uh, but, um, you know, it's the best thing for Charlemagne. They never got him then, they never got her. They never, you know, so she dies in Wolverine's arms. Uh, and all the bad guys, all the bad agents go away because they find out that Charlemagne is dead. So, their problem is taken care of, you know. Yeah. And, um, like I said, it's so Peter, you know, Spider-Man goes back to, uh, yeah, the bad guys disappear yep. and they go back to the good old U S of a Spider-Man is constantly thinking about, uh, you know, he can't, he can't get it out of his mind and he goes, uh, goes home and goes back to Mary Jane and the story ends. Yep. Um, again, not a favorite of mine because I, Spider-Man is too worldly and too experienced to be afraid of any of this crap. I don't know where Wolverine gets off telling him that, that he's in over his head, but what the hell that was, that was Owsley's interpretation of it. Uh, yep. Not a classic, in my opinion. I'm sorry, boys and girls, but uh, I, I just consign it to Craven or Craven's Last Hunt is stuff you like that I can't stand. Um, I couple things I like the Wolverine fight I like a lot. Uh, the Ned Leeds death was shocking to me because this is uh, a, isn't he a Silver Age? Uh, oh yeah, he's been character around. from Ditko. He's been around since Amazing Number Nineteen, I believe. Was yeah, his first St appearance. Stan Lee, Steve Dead co creation, killed, framed as the Hobgoblin. Well, did we don't know that yet. Sorry. He's just did, dead now. Did He's Did you dead. think that it made sense that Ned could have been the Hobgoblin, or even back then you were like, no, there's no way. I just thought it was too obvious. I mean, yeah. I, I just and 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 as a as a, as the anecdote that Peter David tell uh, uh mention slider that i'll uh, talk about uh, everybody else fingered it too uh yeah. i didn't want the hobgoblin to be ned leads or did i but or did, I, you, well, or I did, did you want him to be um I, I did but only with the proper build-up the way it happened obviously was not anything yeah. anything i i i approved of uh, but, um, okay so but we I, go I, I we go to, we go to a series that you say is often crap Web 29. Well, now actually, no, uh, uh, amazing. Ama I'm sorry. Amazing 289 has to come first. Oh, it does. Okay. Let me yes, pull it that up then. Sorry. Uh, let's yeah, see. I know. I had to kind of sit and fiddle around with it myself. And it's like, okay. oh, wait, what happens first? So let me pull this up. So this story explains uh, how things. Ned got there. So, and uh, okay, there you go. For 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 those who who remember uh, my um, uh, ten worst list from many many years ago when my site had uh, first started, uh, this was in the top ten worst stories. Really? Uh, 
yes. there's so many others out there than this. Oh, well, I, 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 there is now 30 years <laughs> later. <laughs> there is now 30 years later. Is it, is it a matter of the disappointment of the reveal of one of the greatest villains of Spider-Man's rogues gallery? Is that why that it's in your top 10? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute because it's not just that he goes, it's, uh, it's, it's how it's revealed and how he goes out. But anyway, yeah. so the story opens with, uh, Jason McIndale, uh, basically, uh, putting a hit or asking the foreigner to put a hit out on a hobgoblin. And, uh, yeah. we find that they, we find that it succeeds. Uh, by the way, the, who wrote this? It was it Peter David It is Peter David, Peter David. And in my interview with Peter David, you can find it on our YouTube channel. He explains how this story came about. It, he, it's a wacky story, really wacky. Mm. Uh, there's so much turmoil in the spider office at this point. Jim Salacrop's now the editor, not uh, Jim Owsley. Um, and sh- just lots of turnover. And it's, it's a shame that the Hobgoblin arc wasn't wrapped up by DeFalco and friends, even though Stern started it. Mm. But, uh, Boy, I can't believe this. What I mean, a controversial opinion, Jr. Come on, Zach, you know better than that. What do you mean controversial. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, wait, who's saying this? Hornacek is saying, "Oh, Wolverines used to be on spy missions, but Spider-Man isn't." Oh, I mean, come on, Peter's gone undercover before. You know, these guys shouldn't scare him. None of these people should scare him. You know, he's no. Spider-Man. He's the goddamn oh, Spider-Man. By the way, anyway. uh, Mary had a question after that last issue. She says, question for Brad and Jr. Do you think on Wolverine versus Spider-Man battle Wolverine would have actually won? No, Wolverine no? shouldn't. Spider-Man should clean his clock without any problem. Why? He, every time because he hits he's him, Spider-Man, every time he it. hits him, he breaks his fists with that adamantium. Uh, yeah, but uh, he ought to be, he ought to ring his, ring his bell. I mean, come on. It, it's still a, it, inside the animadium skull is still a smushy human brain. And so he ought to be, you know, every time he ring, you know, in fact, it ought to hurt worse. Um, <laughs> okay. No, no, it's not a, no, it wouldn't be a draw. Spider-Man, no, no. Spider-Man, no. a black suit is an under. Oh, come on, people. You're just make you're just embarrassing yourself. Oh, stop uh, it. All right. Here, here's the credits. Right there. Yeah. Peter, anyway, Peter David so Wright. the hob, so the hobgoblin's dead, and Ned Leeds' body is coming back, uh, in a casket, and of course Peter is blaming himself for Ned's death because if I hadn't gone out out of the room, and well, first Peter thought they were after him for some reason. I don't know why they, he thought they were after him, yeah. but um, the uh, but anyway, so Peter left the uh, left uh, the hotel and went out to party with Wolverine, and therefore he thinks Ned's dying is his fault. Obviously, the hobgoblin with no kind of decency whatsoever is floating or is, is is flying around. Yep. And then, I mean, you know, we have more. You know, we have more uh, pictures. Betty is starting to lose her mind. Betty is starting to become the uh, the Betty Brant that nobody likes. Uh, the bad person. Yep. Betty Brand is a horrible person. This is where she starts being a horrible person, I think. Yep. Um, and then we go to the Kingpin and the Foreigner playing chess. And we find out the Kingpin is very unhappy with the Foreigner uh, for uh, putting out the hit on the Hobgoblin because the Hobgoblin served purpose, his purpose. The Hobgoblin and the Rose going at each other and going after other minor players or whatever, you know, kept them out of Fisk way. And, uh, so he, you know, he, he didn't really approve, you know, of, uh, the foreigner, uh, acting on his own, um, uh, by taking out the, uh, taking out the hobgoblin. Um, well, as we keep going, you know, again, Peter visits Betty, Betty's talk, you know, talking crazy, more crazy and talking about how, how conversations she's had with her mother, even though her mother's been dead for years, which we of course knew if you, you know, later when we read until tales of Spider-Man, mm-hmm. um, a few issues ago, flash Thompson, who, was framed to be the hobgoblin and everybody stupidly believed he was the hobgoblin, even though flash has never shown any inclination toward scientific expertise or curiosity or anything of that nature. Everybody so bought into flash being the hobgoblin, even Spider-Man bought into it, which after talking with both flash and knowing how flash talks and fighting the hobgoblin should have known that under no circumstances were they the same guy, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, the, the fake hobgoblin has helped spring Flash out of jail so that the cops go looking for him and everything. But Flash is, uh, you know, he's reached such a low point in his life, he can't even get the cops to arrest him. <laughs> um, 
The Rose, who we know is by this time is Richard Fisk, but we'll we'll find out. We'll we'll get more into that relationship in the next couple of issues. Uh, the um, new Hobgoblin, who is of course Jason Mackendale, uh, you know, kills the Rose's associates and threatens him. Um, and Spider Man, and, and well, actually, after the foreigner left the Kingpin, the Kingpin said, uh, told his, uh, you know, said, get in contact with Spider Man. I want, he's, I got something interesting on the Hobgoblin for him. Mm-hmm. So Spider Man goes to, to visit the Kingpin. The Kingpin says, here it is. You know, here it is. I'll go and, uh, you know, I'll go and kill one of my thugs who betrayed me uh, while and leave you, let you read this file on your own. Well, Spider Man can't believe what he's reading the irrefutable proof that ned Leeds was the hobgoblin so we wind back into what apparent what now what they want us to believe happened in that hotel room uh in 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 germany where ned Leeds is just think you know thinking about you know hey you know jonah doesn't like spider-man he'd freak out if he knew who was on his payroll and and oh boy i'm glad i'm the hobgoblin because you know spider-man has been tormenting betty all of her life because um you know she blames betty for her brother's death and betty would wake up in the night screaming because of spider-man so this is being the hobgoblin is ned's way of getting revenge against spider-man but Looks like he's not going to got going to get to it because newly dressed. I mean, I mean the the guys uh, who aren't dressed the same way as the guys in they aren't Spider Man versus Wolverine. Yeah, what what's they're, look? They're all in red suits, they, and the other guys ch- are yeah, in blue suits. Yeah. So, and here is uh, again, here is probably a, a one of many reasons why I despise this story as well. And hopefully, that's not a controversial opinion, Zach. Um, <laughs> because look, look how easily they beat him. Supposedly, he's the Hobgoblin. Supposedly, he's got the Goblin Serum and Goblin powers. Well, what is he? Do? Well, one, he fights like an amateur. And two, they break, they grab him and they break his arm and he cries, oh, my arm, my arm, you broke my arm. And then he says, it's not fair, it's not fair. And then he calls for help for Spider-Man. Now, come on, that is going out like a bitch. Come on. <laughs> Honest <laughs> to God, who, who, who? The, the Hobgoblin was being set up as one of most Spider-Man's deadliest enemies. Mm-hmm. And he goes out this way. I mean... Well, no, 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 all, no, no. All it was in Fisk's file. It must be true, Spider Man. Come on, it must be true. It must be true. Well, it anyway, be true. let me go back a little bit. Internet. It must be true. Okay, so anyway, we'll find out how this chain of events came about. Uh, reading Peter David's uh, blog, uh, which I think it was called. I di- but I digress. But I digress. That, he explained, that was, yeah, he explains how this happens. He explained that. That um, Stern had left, and yeah. DeFalco and himself and the editor Jim Owsley, uh, because Webb, like I said, had a, an irregular set of writers. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's not bring up Morbius getting eaten by sharks. That <laughs> sent us all on a whole new tangent. Although that would have probably made the movie better. Um, True. So they 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 all sat around and said we got we got to figure out we got to bring this Hobgoblin story to a resolution. Now. Peter says that it was DeFalco who proposed that Ned Leeds be the Hobgoblin. Um, Because apparently uh, DeFalco did know that Stern wanted it to be Roderick Kingsley. Stern told him, but DeFalco said that's a lame idea. The whole idea of twins and what, uh, because Stern had started to seed that, Um, you know, and DeFalco thought it was lame. So he, so he thought for a while Richard Fisk was going to be the Hobgoblin. Apparently he changed his mind somewhere. Maybe they thought it would be a better story uh, if Fisk was the Rose then. But so they all decided that Ned was a Hobgoblin and they were all, they're going to see the stories to believe, you know, that, that ultimately the Ned reveal would make sense. Well, then, um, and, and, but as Peter David notices, they aren't, they weren't fooling anyone. Uh, not only did most people guess that it was going to be Ned, but the people who didn't guess that it was going to be Ned just guessed it wasn't because they thought that Ned was too obvious of a choice. So they weren't fooling anybody. Um, and, uh, then Owsley called, you know, called Peter David and said, I want to have lunch with you. I want to talk about the hobgoblin, the identity of the hobgoblin. Yeah. He's Ned Leeds. Uh, you know, and, uh, this keeps going on. Yeah. You know, he's Ned Leeds. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to. Um, and uh, now Richard Fisk wouldn't have been a better reveal. Richard Fisk is, I, nah, I don't care. Uh, he, he's, he's a, a minor annoying character. I think he's dead, isn't he? Didn't his mama kill him? No, nope, you know? he's back. Remember? Oh, of course he's back. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. That Re was the, uh, Spencer brought him back. I think Nick Spencer brought him back yeah, with the, yeah. uh, with the tablet. That's yep. right. He made a deal. Yeah. He may. Yeah. And use boomerang to get it. So yep. anyway, so, uh, Jim Owsley said, no, the Hobbit can't be Ned. Leeds by the way, because... Ned Leeds is back too. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's, it's, uh, excuse me. Comics. Um, That's so Jim Owsley said, well, the Hobbit is not going to be Ned Leeds, uh, because I just wrote a story, uh, that, that and killed Ned Leeds off. And, uh, you know, of course, Peter David is incredulous. You know, it's like, we all decided he was going to be Ned Leeds. What'd you do that for? Uh, yeah. And, Owsley said, well, I have an, I know who the hobgoblin is, who the foreigner <laughs> and Peter day. And, and I, I, this is how I said this What Peter David said, no, I created the foreigner and he's not the hobgoblin. <laughs> that, that's exactly how I said it years ago. But anyway, I did. I've never liked the foreigner. I, I, I again, just these mysterious, all you like all American powerful. villains. Well, <laughs> you don't like, but, porn. but Peter David in this blog said that when the foreigner is drawn, right, he yeah. looks like Patrick McGowan. Now that I could get behind Spider-Man versus I, Patrick McGowan. I don't know who that is. Who's Patrick McGowan. Uh, <laughs> Patrick McGowan. Number six, the prisoner. I am not a number. I am a free man. Oh, I you never know? watched that show. No, sorry. Oh, the Prisoner, yeah. boys and girls, have you What's, heard of The what, Prisoner, what, a what, famous BBC uh, television series? I'm, for, I'm going to be 48 next month. I guarantee you, this young crowd has not heard of The Four. Of the no, prisoner. wait a minute, wait. Somebody the out prisoner. there has heard of Patrick McGowan and The Prisoner. No. Right? Yes, you have. yes, Number you have. Number one Marvel fan. I come on, I really? Know, you know I, it? You, yeah, awesome show. There we go. Hornacek knows it. Okay. Oh, all right. come on. Uh, oh, Brad no. needs to watch it. Agreeing with my, me. my dad was a huge fan. I apologize, Chad. All right, Mike. Yep. The only one but, that doesn't know about it is Zach. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I've already got enough validation. But, <laughs> but you know, if if it had been Spider Man versus Patrick McGowan or the, that I could have got into, but he just looked like any other generic foreign, you know, assassin, whatever. So, all right. Anyway, so so then Owsley and David got Peter David kind of came up with a plan. Oh, how clever will we be if Leeds is the hobgoblin, but we killed him off, you know? And so everybody, all the comic fans are expecting there to be this great reveal. Uh, and uh, we'll and you know, they'll, they'll expect the hobgoblin's identity to be revealed only that he died already. Ha <laughs> ha, aren't we clever? The fans will love it. Well, some did, and most did, yeah. Uh, but most that's... didn't because Roger Stern had to go fix this problem, yeah, years but later it, in the again, 90s. It, it, it's it, it, it's you know, this, this is a case where. You, you, you know, you're, you're, they thought they were more clever than they were. I mean, th this is the situation they had. They led up to Leeds being the hobgoblin. They couldn't extend the mystery out anymore. For whatever reason, Owsley decided to throw a massive monkey wrench in it. Uh, and then leave. And <laughs> yeah. Well, he, yeah, he, well, pretty, well, he would, he would have, yeah, I think he was fired actually. If he Maybe. Didn't leave. I Maybe. think, you know, shooters Marvel at the end was very dysfunctional. Um, but, so it turns out that, you know, the Jason McIndale uh, hired the, the foreigner to uh, to assassinate the Hobgoblin, uh, you know, and then we have um, check out know, so Spider-Man. Spider check out Spider-Man reading this story as we're going along with yeah, this yeah. over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, Spider-Man first goes after the foreigner, but obviously the foreigner is just way too smart to be tracked down by Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man runs into the Mackendale Hobgoblin uh, and, uh, you know, they get in a fight. And of course, the fight lasts longer than it should because, you know, it's rainy and slippery and Spider-Man yeah, can't I, get I his grip. I got you, you know, some pictures of all it. that stuff. I mean, uh, Mac and uh, again, you know, Wolverine, obviously Spider-Man could take Wolverine, you know, and Wolverine's a tough customer, by the way, Wolverine yeah. would give Spider-Man a run for his money. Definitely. 
Jason McIndale should have been should have been Jello pudding the first time that he fought Spider Man. But anyway, so, so McIndale so he gave up he gave up his Jack O' Lantern identity to become the Hobgoblin. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So, but as, as it turns out, um, when the Jack O' Lantern throw it went or Jack O' Lantern, now you got me Hobgoblin, you know, throws a pumpkin bomb at Spidey. Flash Thompson comes to the rescue and it blows up. And Spider-Man survives, and of course the Hobgoblin survives, but poor Flash. Flash looks like he's a dead man. Well, Spider-Man performs CPR and brings Flash back Finally to kisses, the kisses land Flash of the Thompson. Living. There he goes. And then, of course, there is a little bit of a, a humorous moment later when Flash is in the hospital and he says that uh, Spider-Man saved his life, even gave him mouth to mouth. What a guy. What do you think he's doing right now, Pete? And Peter's thinking popping breath mints. That's what. Uh, <laughs> so that, that was amusing. So, but Flash says, Spider Man, you know, taught me a lesson about never giving up. Now, you remember that, Pete. You've had all these hard times in your life, you know, but just don't give up because, uh, you know, you have to do, you have to give 100%, like Spider Man said, and Spider Man wouldn't lie. So, okay. so who was the Hobgoblin if not Flash? I guess we won't know. Uh, Peter says. So, the foreigner and uh, foreigner and uh, kingpin are in another game of chess. Uh, this time, the the kingpin uh, uh, sends him a little note with a little bomb in it, you know, and blows him up. Uh, but of course, he's the foreigner. He is an awesome, super awesome, super assassin uh, who was supposed to look like Patrick McGowan. Uh, and of course, he's just singed. So. Okay. And then the final, the final couple of pages at this time, Felicia is actually shacking up with Peter. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it turns out that, uh, she's sewn him three new black costumes, uh, yeah. because she really likes the black costume on him. And frankly, I like the black costume costume on him too. Uh, yeah. so Felicia makes him three new costumes and he jumps out swinging, uh, convey, you know, reaffirming, that he is Spider-Man and that he will continue the long fight for truth, justice, and the American way. Yeah. Anyway, stupid story, stupid resolution. You know, a cheat, one of the biggest cheats ever. No, you don't reveal a super villain's identity that way. You don't do it that way. Uh, It was a whole whole cop out. Now, Later than I heard, I read, I thought I read that, well, that was supposed to be another fake out, but Peter David's uh, narrative doesn't seem to suggest that it was a fake out. That was meant to be real. It was meant to be Ned, um, you know, but fortunately, fortunately, Roger Stern was able to use the shitty way the Hobgoblin went out as evidence that Ned wasn't the Hobgoblin yeah. in Hobgoblin Lives. Yep. So. And Hornacek says in the next issue, Spider-Man proposes. <laughs> with Felicia making them costumes, the previous issue. Yes. I know. Well, that was, a, <laughs> as, as we all know, and as unfortunately Joe Casada like, like to, you know, pull out as some kind of excuse. Well, the marriage was sudden. Well, the announcement to doing it was sudden, but the relationship was not, but anyway, yes, that's another agreed. story. So anyway, so this story actually kind of bleeds into the next couple of uh, web of Spider-Man's, which were written by Owsley, I guess, to try to, uh, you know, put out the fire that he'd started. Right. Kind of like that foreigner bomb. Yep. <laughs> Who's on cover on this. This looks pretty good. Uh, uh, can't I can't read know. that down there. I don't know. I can't read the credits because they're, the, at my advanced age, the letters are getting smaller and harder to read. All right. But anyway, the story starts Geiger, out. Geiger, Steve Geiger. I, I okay. guess. The story starts out now. The la- Amazing 289 started out with Ned's body coming back. Now, Web 29 starts out with Ned's funeral. Okay. All right. And so anyway, they're at Ned's funeral, and there's this mysterious blonde dude out and hanging out in the background. Of course, you know. We don't know who he is yet, but we'll find out very soon. Oh, oh he's carrying. Look what he's carrying. Oh, that's, that's dead. Dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. He's carrying a rose. rose. He must be on The Bachelor. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Don't uh, you don't watch that, do you? Uh, I I uh, there's a guy. Oh, uh, of course. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so there's a dude that was on it like season two that was from uh, Springfield, Missouri. And went to high school in Joppa, Missouri. So, yes, I watched that season. 
yeah, I don't know what the guy's doing now, but I did watch that season. Uh, let me guess. He didn't win her heart. I don't he even remember. He, I, I do. Re- there's or no okay. way the bachelor though. They're trying to win his heart. Well, uh, no, no. She, he gives the rose to the, okay. the women he wants. And they, they eventually, he gives the rose to one of them. And I don't know if they got to get married by the end of the episode or whatever. I don't know what's going on. Oh, number one Marvel fan says, Brad watches The Bachelor, not The Prisoner. I see now. There you go. There you go. I agree with you, Adam. When I was a kid, what is this, 1986? Uh, yeah, it's around 80. I'm 87, 11. 87, this 89, is, something like that. 87, actually. 87. Yeah, 87. So I'm like 11, 12. This was confusing as a kid. I, I do remember Adam. I agree. Well, it was. <laughs> um, Adam, the opposite of The Bachelor would be a prisoner. All right. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm going on thirty something years of it too. Uh, so oh, that's funny. But uh, uh, anyway, so everybody, you know, everybody leaves except the blonde guy who lays the rose on the grave. Oh, and then Joy Mercado, uh, the uh, you know, as we know, uh, reporter for the Net for Now magazine, which yep. you know they tried to to get her going and with with Peter and uh, traveling the world for the for now and and. They're tr- in trying to give Webb a purpose. Uh, you know, Traveling Peter would travel Spider-Man her to stories. various countries. Spider-Man would always show up where Peter Parker was, and nobody ever put two and two together. So anyway, as it turns out, you know, Richard Fisk, aha, what are you doing here at a reporter's funeral? You know, and of course he says that's my business. He runs away and gets into his hot ro- the hot rod with his friend Alfredo. Um, uh, Fredo, I knew it was you. You broke my heart. Uh I knew it was Alfredo. You, Fredo. And, I knew it uh, was you, Fredo. You and uh, and his girlfriend Dina, or whatever, you know, because Richard Fisk has a girlfriend. So and well, I mean, of course, it's it's very it's of course now they're just talking about Ned Leeds being the hobgoblin. Is of course that is exactly how it was, you know. That's how it always was. Um, <laughs> oh, not going to touch that one. Not <laughs> going to touch that one. Not going anywhere. That's I'll, a hot tell, pumpkin bomb. That's I'll, a tell, hot I'll, pumpkin tell, bomb. I'll tell more. Uh, anyway. So, you know, we find out, of course, you know, the, you know, of course, the, it's the hob, he's the hobgoblin. And, and we go to a, uh, you know, as, as we kind of go through uh, getting rid of some of the suspects, uh, you know, uh, Fisk is wanting to, to take care of some old business and wipe out any ties that, that you know, he might have had to the Hobgoblin or people who, that Hobgoblin may have hired that he had some connection with. So he sends Varley and Johnson out to to kill Roderick Kingsley and uh, Chris Keating, uh, both of whom were Hobgoblin suspects. Uh, and as we find out later, Chris Keating was uh, was an identity the foreigner used. Um, but, and we did see that Roderick Kingsley was making was making weapons for the Hobgoblin. But apparently this must have really been Daniel at this time. Uh, okay. And I, actually, you know, I, I think sometime in 2023, I, I have a let's see if here if I can use my powers of divination. And I think we might be looking at Hobgoblin lives and guardians at the gate. Uh, in a later in spider Next history, <laughs> no, no, well, in months to come, but not months August to... because no. August is a special Brad request month, which we'll oh, talk yeah. about later. We'll yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, later. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, all right. So, anyway, so Keating and Nick Kingsley are, are arguing about who helped the hobgoblin the most and who was going to take the fall. Barley and Johnson come in and try to, uh, and Kingsley is a is shot. We don't quite know what happens to him. Uh, Keating gets away, which of course he does because it turns out that he's really the foreigner later on. Spider Man goes back. You know, Spider Man is you know really feeling bad. He wants to go hug Felicia. Felicia's not there. She got bored. Went out to play. That's all right. Um, he's getting married next month. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. So, well, then we find out that uh, you know actually this repeats. Then then we actually repeat some pages in the. Uh, um, uh, from amazing 289, uh, the, uh, yep. uh pictures, the, uh, the pages where, uh, the mass Mackendale has killed Varley and Johnson, uh, the Rose's two, uh, closest associates, uh, and then attacks the Rose. And, um, uh, this is where the, and this is where Fisk decides to give up being in 289. He says, father, here he comes. But in the, uh, in this issue, he just says the Rose is dead. So he's, he's going to quit, but, so anyways, you know, Alfredo is going around finding, you know, all the hobgot leads his old hideouts uh, to blow them up. Um, Peter decides to go sit on a pier and sulk. Uh, but then Wolverine shows up, probably because he smelled him. 
Uh, you know, or because he's on the know, cover. Pro- yeah, he probably smelled him. Uh, and so he's trying to convince, you know, he, he's trying to talk Peter into saying, you know, you can't, you got to move on. You got to, you know, you can't let this uh, eat you alive. And, you know, this kind of shit happens in a very cold and cruel world. Uh, but of course, you know, Wolverine playing uh, uh, junior psychologist is interrupted by thugs because, of course, thugs are always going to show up. Yep. Here's, here's anyway, the hobgoblin, the new hobgoblin, then uh, attacks Alfredo. Uh, then we go back to the pier where Spider Man and Wolverine are beating the crap out of the thugs. Uh, then we go back to to uh, um, hobgoblin and Alfredo, uh, and it, then we go back to Wolverine and the thugs, Spider Man and the thugs, and then Wolverine and Spider Man wind, wind up their little heart to heart where. Wolverine tells him, let's see, what words of wisdom does he give him? Uh, Here, hold on. I got you. I got you. Hold on. Yeah. You got too much going for you, too much to live for. Think about it. Um, But um, anyway, but anyway, during this time, Alfredo goes off the pier, but Spider-Man saves him. um, And uh, and next issue. Yeah. Pretty one next issue. So, you know, Wolverine gives him a heart to heart. Next issue. Number 30. Web. Oh, yeah, Web 30. We'll go through this really quick. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, the, give me a second. I got to pull it up. All right. Let's see. Here we go. This is like the origin of the rose, right? Well, it says the origin of the rose, but it's actually the origin of the rose and the Ned Leeds Hobgoblin. Okay. So, got as it. we go through this, uh, we find no, again, Spider, Spider Man is mon- monologuing through the events of the last uh, few issues of the few months that's or whatever. That's a huge oh. editor's note down to bottom. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I can't you, forget that. Uh, let's this see issue here. takes place right after 289 of Amazing and, and Web, Web 29, 29 and before, and before Peter, Parker Peter Parker 128 and Amazing and, 290. Yeah, yeah, we know it's confusing, but no one ever said we knew what we were doing. That's true. <laughs> and this is this is Jim Salkrup, who was on his way out not long after this as well. Man. So Man. anyway, so Spider-Man, you know, gives us the, uh, you know, for, for those of you who weren't here in previous issues, because every issue is somebody's first issue, yep. he tells us the story of finding out about the, you know, that Ned was a hobgoblin. Well, now we're going to Richard Fisk. Uh, we find out that apparently the Kingpin and Richard Fisk are Catholic. Uh, which I never knew before. Uh, Kingpin never struck me as a particularly religious kind of guy. But uh, here Richard is uh, walking into a parish and wanting to uh, confess his sins to a priest. Yeah. So, yeah. With a headband. Yeah. It's it. It's the 80s. Well, yeah. And uh, so anyway, so he starts, you know, he starts telling the story, uh, you know, of, of his life as the Rose and the ho- and then leads us the Hobgoblin. Basically, Ned came to Fisk as a reporter because Ned wants to take the kingpin down and Ned won- knows that Fisk wants to take his dad down. Uh, and uh, so, you know, like I said, Ned's trying to get Fisk to work with him. Uh, and look, so look at this he- splash page. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So basically, Ned, you know, Ned is following Fisk and Alfredo because, you know, Alfredo, you know, he and Alfredo are going going around the world, you know, uh, uh, you know, getting laid and things like that, like rich guys do. Uh, And uh, I don't think but since uh, I don't know if, you know, this could be Jeffrey Epstein's island, I wonder. Uh, you know, I mean, so, I mean, it could be, I mean, how old are these girls here? Uh, I mean, I know that, uh, I know that Colossus probably paid. Oh, stop it. I to, to, to Epstein's <laughs> Island. Um, uh, well, anyways, it turned, you know, it turns out that Ned skeevy Ned now has been following these guys everywhere, even to Epstein's Island. Um, but, uh, he went to Venice. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, anyway, but, uh, Richard decides that, you know, after then after a, a little problem with uh, fit with Richard's mother who gets kidnapped because of the the, uh, you know, the kingpins, dalliance or whatever. But Daredevil is able to rescue her and return her to the kingpin in exchange for the kingpin uh, turning on his uh, mayoral candidate, which is a pretty good. This was during Frank Miller's run uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in Daredevil uh, and um uh, 
and so was actually, you know, again, of course, classic run, obviously. But, you know, Richard decides that he's going to, uh, you know, he, ne- he needs to kind of take more direct action against the old man to bring down the old man's empire. So he's looking at places he wants to set up a super secret super villain headquarters. Uh, and uh, he gets and then well, Ned finds him again and uh, says, hey, this is, you know, really fortuitous because guess what I found? You know, so he leads him back to one of his hideouts and, but, uh, you know, it's like, Hey, I'm the hobgoblin. All right. Well, we're about running out of time here. So basically what happens is Ned reveals that he's a hobgoblin. He's found the hobgoblin shit. So the Rose and the hobgoblin decide to, you know, to work out an alliance to take down the Kingpin. Uh, Varley and Johnson turn out to be a couple of crooked cops that Alfredo was able to bribe to come over to the Rose's side. Uh, and, uh, but unfortunately things just start going wrong. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the whole uh, bringing down the kingpin doesn't go quite as smoothly as they had hoped. And Ned becomes more and more obsessed with Spider-Man and more and and starts to become unhinged, uh, and becomes unreliable. And Fisk even just thinks that maybe he's going to have to be the one to take out Ned. Uh, references to other stories like Nuke. I don't know who Nuke was. I don't care. Um, it was a Captain America story. Yeah, I don't care yeah. about that. So, yeah. but uh, so anyway, we get some more flashbacks, and we find out that Ned is has gone completely crazy, uh, and uh, you know is and that's the uh, and just brings the whole thing down. Well, the the anyway, Fisk runs out of the. Uh, he's told the priest enough. Uh, he runs out. A cop stops him. He shoots the cop. You know, he realizes, oh, boy, I passed the point of no return. Uh, and he walks into his dad's office and says, okay, you in. I'll work for you. And that, boys and girls, is yep. how the mystery of the Hobgoblin originally unfolded. Yeah. As J. Jonah Jameson said in the first Spider-Man movie, crap, crap, bag of crap. <laughs> and then guess what came after this issue? or slightly after it was, I uh, know the next issue started Craven's last hunt. That's right. It did. So yeah. The Craven's month. last hunt came yeah, right because after this they month. got married and then went right into Craven's last hunt. Yep. So was this a good story? No, it was not. It Why? was a, it was a disappointing resolution to an excite story that had started off exciting with plenty of mystery and, and intrigue and, and, yeah. you know, who was the hobgoblin, you know, and after so many false leads, like first it was lefty Donovan, then it was, mm-hmm. you know, then it was a uh, flash and, you know, we, we were finally going to find out the, the, the hobgoblin's identity and then find out that not only was it a character who had been around forever, but he'd just been killed off. So Peter, there was no big mono e mono between Peter and Ned. That, that's just cheating the audience. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, but obviously, the, as you read from Peter, uh, Peter David's uh, blog, that was the situation. You know, he was dealt and he was told to uh, he's, you know, and Owsley said, by the way, you're going to write the reveal story. I am. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Adam says Nick Spencer, Redcon, Ned dying in his ASM run, whose body they bring back to New York. <laughs> I don't think he retconned it. I think he, I think that Ned's cloned, didn't he? Well, I, I, I didn't have a chance to go back and read any of that stuff, but I think what happened is Ned was, we all thought Ned wasn't given the goblin formula, but it turns out Ned was given the hoblin, hobgoblin for, or the goblin formula. So oh. he didn't die, but because I guess he didn't get as much as the other goblins, it took him a while to claw his way out. Oh, of the okay. So he wasn't life. a clone. He got the goblin serum and he just took about two decades to come out of the grave. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now there was a Ned okay. clone, uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Who knocked a, up Betty, the real Ned or the clone? I wonder, I've always, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, maybe they should uh, find, you know, if Seward trainer were alive, they, maybe he, they could give him to him and he could see if there was any genetic drift. So anyway, boy, anyway, boys, and, this, and this just sour, this just had a very bitter taste one for of the a best long, intros long mysteries time. of spider-man and history plus and mackendale, the ending. yeah plus mackendale was never a convincing hobgoblin never a good hobgoblin they tried all kinds of ways to juice him up they merged him with a demon that didn't work they yeah. uh, gave him superpowers you know from from craven's son uh, Dimitri, that didn't yeah. make him an interesting villain. They turned him into a cybernetic goblin, that didn't help. And then finally, Roger Stern came and reset the whole thing. 
So. Good. Mary has a question about, uh, besides the Norman original Goblin reveal, has Spidey had any other better mystery reveals? Well, the Norman Goblin reveal, if you want to be perfectly honest, and maybe this this maybe isn't the time because we've got another show coming up. The Norman Go uh, uh, Goblin, Green Goblin reveal actually isn't that great when you think about it. Why? Uh, huh? Why? Well, one because one because we'd seen that we didn't we'd only seen Norman uh just a few issues ago. Harry was introduced in issue 31. Norman, I don't think, was introduced until issue like 37 or something. So, like, yeah. well, you know, two issues, you know, like in two issues, like this guy we just met is the is the green goblin. Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. What's wrong? You know. So, yeah. but anyway. Uh, There's been a couple things about uh the Mackendale drunk spidey issue, Web 38. We've reviewed that one, haven't we? Uh we may have. I think we did. Um, I think they've blown every Spider-Man villain mystery is what Adam says. Yeah, I was trying to think, Mary, I was trying to think of a really good one where I said, oh, the, oh, the Jackal. I like that one. You did? Uh, okay. I thought the Jackal was a good one. It yeah. didn't last too long. Uh, the problem was it really wasn't seated well enough. I mean, it was like, yeah. oh, it's Professor Warren. And then, well, yeah, then as, as the story is told in flashback, of course, it's Professor Warren. But it really wasn't seated uh, very well. In fact, uh, no, in fact, there were like, there were about three people, I guess, that wrote in and said uh, that Warren was the, the Jacko, but a lot of, uh, yeah, that mystery pretty well fooled everybody. Nobody yeah, saw Senator that Ward, Kindred, you didn't like those? <laughs> oh, Kindred could have been, all, well, that there, see, again, you know, one thing when you have a mystery, you have to have the end in mind yep. and you have to set it up. You can't just, you do. but admittedly Conway came up with the Jackal without, because the first couple of times a Jackal appears, th there's no hint that it's really professor Warren. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then, you know, and I think Conway has said he didn't know who it was and then he just made it Warren later, but that one actually worked out and had a satisfactory ending. Bart Hamilton, green goblin. That wasn't a mystery that lasted very long. The third green goblin like showed up, I mean, he showed up like an issue 176. Everybody thought it was Harry. Then in 180, it was revealed to be Hamilton. I mean, that was an okay reveal, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really pumped up as a big mystery. So how about Carrie? Carrie and that wasn't a bad one, but again, that was yeah. one only a, a single story. You know, I mean, yeah. those really don't compare with like the, the goblin mysteries where like they they take, they take place over months. What about the master planner? Who's the master planner? Well, Dr. Octopus, but that, yeah, was, that was a mystery. Well, yeah, but not for very long. I'm, I'm just yeah. saying a lot in the old days, they used to wrap up mysteries fairly quickly. Well, yeah. I guess, except for the green goblin, but, uh, um, yeah. but no, I mean the, the hobgoblin was a prolonged story and for it to it end was. like it did was, was awful. Yeah. So. All right. That is your love fest of February. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will be back in 30 days. Yep, when the leaves <laughs> or when, the, when the leaves are starting to sprout again in various yeah, spring's parts. Spring's coming. Country. Spring's yep. coming. We're gonna be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Yeah.